everyone. In this video I'm going to show you um, how the starter motor works on a Suzuki SV650. So this is from a uh, Generation 1 SV650. So this is from the 99 to 2002 model motorcycle. So <clears throat> I'm also going to dismantle it and show you what it's how it works inside. So to demonstrate it working um, I just need a pair of jump leads which I'm just going to get here jump leads and I need a battery okay so the operation of the starter motor is actually very simple and this is actually an easy way to test the uh, starter motor you can take it off the engine it's just held on with two little bolts at the front bottom section of the engine so take off those two bolts and it just you just basically pull the um, starter motor out okay and I can take a red lead which is going to be connected to the positive terminal of the battery like so and I'm going to connect that or I'm going to connect that to this bolt here in a second now for the moment first of all I will connect a black lead to the negative terminal of the battery and I will connect that to just this section here this part here now I should do it around this other side so it's not in the view just connect it here okay so this is how it would be kind of the current would flow when it's connected into the motorcycle the black lead kind of represents the engine of the motorcycle itself which is actually connected to the frame and the frame is grounded to the negative or connected to the negative terminal of the battery <coughs> Sorry. now <coughs> normally to start the engine you would hit a little button, the starter button, to get the engine running. And now when you do that, you actually um, uh, connect up the circuit which connects to the uh, supplies power to the starter motor. So I'm actually going to connect this uh, red lead to this little um, bolt here. Now this bolt is normally connected in directly to the positive terminal of the battery. <clears throat> so I'll just connect it up now there's going to be a few sparks just to be aware if there's going to be some sparks but it's not in dangerous all it's doing is allowing current to flow through the starter motor now what you're going to probably see is that this is going to start spinning now when I do the connection before I do the connection I'm just going to hold this starter motor down because uh, due to the torque of the armature spinning it's going to cause it to jump around so if I just hold it down Okay, and I'm just going to connect this up to the net positive. To Oop. Okay, so you could see that was spinning really fast. Do it again. Okay. <clears throat> so you're not going to electrocute yourself. You don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> there will be a large current flowing through the... Um, starter motor but it's not going to flow through you okay because it's only a 12 volt battery okay so let's get rid of this that's how it actually that's how you test that the starter motor is working fine and in this case the starter motor is working fine so the problem with this starter motor <clears throat> you may have watched a, an, another video um, I did or two other videos that I did on the engine that this was connected into and uh, basically I got I came across this engine because the owner of the motorcycle had replaced it because he thought that the engine had failed now it hadn't actually failed it was just that the starter motor was damaged the little pinion on the end of the armature is damaged and it wasn't connected into the starter clutch to start up the engine properly or it was making a lot of noise okay now to open up the <clears throat> to open up the uh, starter motor I just need a little it's just a, I think it's a seven millimeter socket and there's two little bolts that run the whole way through 
the starter motor to keep it together. So I just have to open them up. This shouldn't be too tight. Okay. Before we dismantle it, we can note some important um, parts on the uh, <coughs> starter motor. This one here, we have a seal. It's a little black seal. Hopefully you can see that. It runs the whole way around it. Now this is a little oil seal because this connects into the engine. And this oil seal's job is to keep the oil in the engine. So if the bike went over on its side, that the oil does not spill out all over the or out past the starter motor so that keeps the oil in the engine and then we have two little seals here which you can kind of check the condition of them two black seals two black rubber seals and they are there to keep dirt and water out of the starter motor okay so let's remove these two bolts <coughs> we could obviously see that this starter motor is working perfectly fine because uh, this armature was turning when I connected it up to the battery that's what I would expect <coughs> okay. let's take out these two long bolts to hold it together and we should be able to disconnect this end now at this end this end we should have ah, okay there we go so let us see Okay, so let's look at this end first of all. Let's put that there. Now, we have a, a little plate that comes out. And this is called the brush plate. Okay, now the brush plate, um, if we just take a look at it here, it's actually damaged somewhat. Now, the brush plate has two little uh, carbon brushes on it. Okay, so they're spring mounted, so there's two of them. There's one here, and there's one here. Okay, and you can see, hopefully you can see that fairly well, but they're just made from carbon or graphite. Okay, and they're spring mounted to kind of keep them pushed out, so they're pushed in towards the center. Okay, but I can push them back, and that's because these little springs, there and there. So it's quite a simple, contraption and um, this copper colored material is just copper wire and it connects <coughs> it basically the copper wire connects to these little carbon brushes you can see the copper wire moving when I push that back in all right so that's where the current comes to these brushes all right the current flows through these two brushes now this brush here is damaged because it is the one, this is the brush that actually connects to the positive terminal of the battery. So, just looking at it again, this would have sat in here, and this was connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Now this got damaged it seems, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure why that, it basically got damaged because there's a little bolt here that comes off and when that gets screwed off um, there's a little terminal that connects onto this and obviously that started twisting freely, the bolt is twisting freely as you can see and it's bringing the little copper wire with it so that basically snapped the copper wire that was connected to here so I'm not sure why that would have come free but it did that's obviously something that could fail it or fail quite easily. So something to watch out for on your own motorcycle. Um, but it obviously was creating enough of a connection here that it allowed the starter motor to work. Okay. When I tested it, okay. So this is the I'm gonna put that to the side for a second. Now this plate um, it actually slots on here. So this is called the armature. I think I can take it out. You just see there might be intermediate gears on the other side so before I take it out I'll just show you how this works so the current um, goes in through this brush here 
so the current, this is the positive, connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and it flows through this, which is, okay, so it sits on like this, so you can see that the two brushes are in connection, they're connected up to this centerpiece, which is called the armature, the armature has a little, at least one washer on it, so it's just one little washer, okay, and essentially the current flows in through the positive terminal, it connects in, or flows in through this armature and flows around the armature and comes back through this little um, carbon brush which is connected up to the casing of the <coughs> casing of the starter motor which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery remember we had the lead this is the casing as well we had the lead was connected on here so this is connected to the negative terminal of the battery okay so when current flows through that armature <coughs> it actually causes that armature to rotate. Okay, so let's pull out the armature and just show you. Now, uh, there's actually, if I try to pull it out, you'll notice it pulls itself back in. Okay, the reason it's pulling itself back in is because there is a magnetic field pulling it back. Okay. So that's the armature out. So you can see here this little piece <coughs> was connected. So in here there's actually a permanent magnet. Okay, so you can't really see it necessarily. It's not obvious, but its effects are quite obvious. I can do this, bring it into the middle, and it'll just connect, be attracted to the wall of the... Um, this is called the, uh, I think the stator okay because it has this permanent magnet now what happens is <coughs> that when current flows through this armature okay so from the brushes or from the positive brush current flows through into this armature but there's all windings of wire and there's also um, iron um, plates which you can kind of see here those iron plates that are built into the armature okay and what happens is that the current it's, it's, it's basically a big coil of wire now the coil of wire causes current to flow in the coil of wire and um, essentially current current flowing in a wire in a magnetic field um, creates a torque okay so I won't go into the physics of how it works but it creates a torque or a force on the armature and causes it to spin so it doesn't spin under normal circumstances it only spins when the current is flowing through this armature All right. now you can see these little um, metal strips okay there it's divided up into metal strips or metal plates I suppose that are embedded in the armature now the reason that there is you can kind of see them a little bit here there's segments of metal they're not it's not one massive lump of metal it's segments of metal and they're all separated by a insulator and the reason that the metal plates are separated by an insulator is to reduce eddy currents now again you don't need to know about eddy currents but it basically <coughs> They're little small loops of currents that flow in the metal and they cause heating okay and you don't want your stator or your your starter motor to overheat because it then gets destroyed this sort of um, insulating material is like a plasticky material and if it gets too hot it will uh, disintegrate and it will destroy your starter motor okay so again we can put that back in uh, see it's attracted to the magnetic field okay so there we go so that's it it's quite simple take it out again it's quite a force okay now we can take this part 
part as well. Okay, so that's just our stator with the permanent magnet. You can actually see in at this end, you can see that there's actually one, two, three, four. So it's not just one massive permanent magnet, there's actually four um, magnets that are creating a magnetic field. There's probably, I'm not 100% sure, but there's probably two of them are, it's probably north, south, and north, south, or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but that's your, um, that's the starter motor on a Suzuki SV650. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comment section. Hopefully you found this video useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you later, everyone.